Today, we are diving into one of the most audacious, elegant, and just plain wild ideas in the history of physics. It's a thought experiment so mind-bending that it suggests everything you see, everything you are, is made from just one single particle. This is the story of the one electron universe. So let's start with the puzzle that got this whole thing started. You know, in our everyday world, no two things are ever truly identical. Two grains of sand will always have tiny differences. But in the quantum world, that rule gets thrown right out the window. Every single electron, whether it's in your body or in a star billions of light years away, has the exact same mass, the exact same charge. They aren't just similar. They are perfect, indistinguishable copies. And that kind of absolute sameness, well, it just begs for an explanation. And back in 1940, the physicist John Archibald Wheeler came up with a truly radical one. In a now legendary phone call to his brilliant grad student, Richard Feynman, he dropped this bombshell. The reason all electrons are identical is because they are, quite literally, the same electron. I mean, just think about that for a second. It's a stunning solution to a deep quantum mystery. Wheeler was just taking our everyday logic, you know, if two things are completely identical, they must be the same object, and he applied it to the entire universe. So that one conversation between Wheeler and his student, a young Richard Feynman, kicked off one of the greatest what-if scenarios in all of physics. Let's unpack how this incredible idea is even supposed to work. Right, so how could this possibly be true? How can one single electron be everywhere at once? The answer lies in shifting our perspective and seeing reality not just in three dimensions of space, but in four dimensions, with time being the fourth. In physics, the path any object takes through this four-dimensional space-time is called its world line. Your own world line, for example, is a continuous path that stretches all the way from your birth to this very moment. It's your entire history mapped out. Wheeler decided to apply this exact same concept to his one single cosmic electron. But instead of a simple straight line, Wheeler imagines something way grander. He pictured an immense tangled up knot of a world line, weaving back and forth across the entire span of time from the Big Bang all the way to the very end of the universe. Just one continuous, unbelievably complicated thread. So where are all the other electrons we see? Well, they're basically an illusion created by our perspective. Imagine our present moment right now is like a flat sheet of paper. And imagine that tangled ball of yarn is the electron's world line. If you slice that paper through the ball of yarn, what do you see? You see thousands, millions of little dots where the yarn punches through. Each one of those intersections, that's an electron. One single line creating countless particles at any given moment. And this is where the idea gets truly brilliant. Because it doesn't just explain electrons, it also explains antimatter. An electron in this picture is just a spot where the world line is moving forward in time. But what happens when that line loops all the way back from the future and starts moving backward through our slice of time? We see that as an anti-electron or a positron. So in this view, matter and antimatter aren't different things at all. They're the exact same particle, just traveling in opposite directions through time. It's a beautiful idea, right? So simple, so powerful, it explains two huge mysteries in one elegant swoop. But... As gorgeous as it is, it runs into some massive, universe-sized problems when you actually compare it to reality. Okay, so the hypothesis makes a crystal-clear, testable prediction. If every forward-moving segment, an electron, must eventually loop back in time as a positron, then the universe as a whole should have a perfect balance. For every electron, there has to be a positron. A perfect 50-50 split between matter and antimatter. But when we look out at the universe... That's not what we see. Not at all. Our universe is overwhelmingly made of matter. Antimatter is incredibly rare. And this isn't some small error in the calculation. This is a catastrophic failure of the model. The prediction isn't just wrong. It's about as wrong as it could possibly be. And the problems actually go even deeper than that, right to the core of how we now understand reality. You see, the one electron universe is a particle first kind of idea. But modern physics, it's built on a completely different foundation called quantum field theory, or QFT. QFT paints a totally different picture. It says the fundamental stuff of the universe isn't particles, but invisible fields that permeate all of space, an electron field, a photon field, and so on. Particles, like electrons, are just little ripples or vibrations in these fields. Why are all electrons identical? 
because they're all just ripples in the same underlying electron field. And here's the killer point. New ripples can be created. In things like radioactive decay, electrons are literally created out of energy, something that is completely impossible if there's only one electron to begin with. So the contrast here is just stark. One theory is all about a single, fundamental particle. The other is about universal fields, where particles can pop in and out of existence. One is a beautiful but discarded thought experiment. The other is the reigning, verified foundation of all of modern particle physics. So, if this idea is so completely and totally wrong, why on earth are we still talking about it? Well, because this is where the story takes a fascinating turn. The one electron universe might just be the most productive and influential failure in the entire history of science. And Feynman himself tells us exactly why. He later admitted he never took the whole one electron for the whole universe part too seriously, but that other piece of the idea, the part where a positron could be seen as an electron moving backward in time, he knew that was pure genius. As he famously put it, that I stole. And what Feynman did with that stolen idea was nothing short of revolutionary. He realized that even if it wasn't a literal picture of reality, it was an incredibly powerful mathematical tool. It gave him a brand new way to visualize and, more importantly, calculate the incredibly complex dance between particles and light. He basically turned Wheeler's physical picture into a new language, the language of Feynman diagrams. In these simple little drawings, an arrow moving forward in time is a particle. An arrow pointing backward in time is an antiparticle. This simple, elegant system took ridiculously difficult calculations and made them systematic, visual, and intuitive. It's a language that every single physicist in the world still learns and uses to this day. And so, that stolen piece from a beautiful, wrong idea became the absolute foundation of quantum electrodynamics, or QED, our near-perfect theory of how light and matter interact. And for this incredible work, rooted in that wild phone call from Wheeler, Richard Feynman shared the Nobel Prize. And this really brings us to a final, pretty provocative thought. The one electron universe was wrong, but it was wrong in such a profound and imaginative way that it blew open entirely new ways of thinking about the world. It just goes to show you that in science, sometimes the most valuable ideas aren't the ones that turn out to be right, but the ones that are bold enough to completely change the questions we ask in the first place.